Welcome. Uh, so this week, before I left the uh, not so sunny UK, I wanted to uh, continue on a little bit from last week's video from Hidden Tbilisi and show you some edits here in Lightroom and then moving into Photoshop. Should be quite a quick and easy video, uh, but I wanted to do something sort of showing the editing side of some of the images that we placed up last week. So yeah, let's jump right in and we'll get to it. So here we are in Adobe Lightroom. I've already got three images kind of um, lined up, as you'll see here, these three images. Uh, what I want to do, these are literally straight out of camera from uh, the shoot that you saw us uh, you know, put up last week. Um, this entertainment hall in the heart of Tbilisi. So it's kind of a case of I want to, first of all, I shot these, as you'll see here, at 20 millimeters on my 16 to 35 millimeter lens. So something that anybody could probably do, even if you have got a crop sensor camera. Shooting up like this um, is not something that you will ever see me do personally. Um, but what I've done here is I've captured three brackets, which are two stops apart. So this is the brightest one, this is the center, and this is the darker exposure. So the first thing I wanna do is grab these brackets and I wanna actually blend these together. So I'm gonna select them all, right click, photo merge, HDR. Now, it used to be back in the day that I would uh, have time to actually edit my work, and I used to actually do luminosity masking in Photoshop. The thing is, is when you get busier and you start actually trying to, like, you know, actually sell work or you're trying to move on, and like I'm doing, doing workshops and things like this, time is a premium. So I use this feature, the HDR preview, uh, sorry, the HDR merge preview here to combine my brackets and then I work on the file and try and get it as natural as I possibly can. So that's the first thing. Okay, so it normally takes just a couple of seconds to load that up on the screen. And once it does, it pops up a little preview box just like this. So here are the settings. And what I normally do here is I normally leave the auto align on just so it aligns the three images kind of level as possible. The de-ghosting, Deghosting, I normally leave off, that's here. Um, stack, we don't need to worry about, and I just merge those. So that just takes a few seconds. The speed here really depends on the type of processing power you've got in your laptop or PC, um, or Mac, if you use Mac. So once you've got your images combined, you end up with one file here like you see, and it says HDR or PNG file, which is basically a Lightroom TIFF file. Um, you can see that right here, that's basically selecting it. It normally resides right beside the other files, your raw files that have come straight out of camera. What we're now gonna do though, is we're not gonna keep those. We're going to delete those files. I actually, because I travel full time, I don't like to keep them. The one that we care about is right here, which is the, uh, the PNG or, or TIFF file. Uh, and that's now becoming my raw file. So I'm actually going to um, delete those files actually from my whole hard drive. So I'm actually going to press delete and delete from disk. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do with this uh, flattened or combined TIFF file, should I say, is go to the develop module. So the first thing we're gonna do in develop module is basically scroll all the way down until you see the lens corrections tab, undo that, so select the little button that shows downwards and that'll open up more in the menu. And then we're basically going to select two tick boxes, which is the remove chromatic aberration tick box and the enable profile corrections tick box. Once you've done them, you'll see uh, the, the image will adjust. Um, the first one is for like purple fringing around windows, things like this, which doesn't occur a lot actually in my 16 to 35 mil lens. And the second tick box allows the um, software program to actually enable a profile correction for the particular lens that you're using. And you'll see right here, there's that 16 to 35 mil. Then we're gonna scroll further down and under the transform tab, we're gonna select auto. And what you'll see is it aligns fairly well. The reason for that is Lightroom's doing a very good job because it's a square room. It's quite easy for Lightroom to pull that up, straighten it out and try and do a, a fairly good job. It's not doing an amazing job, but it's doing a good job. But you'll see here, it does lean to the right a little bit, and I don't like that. So the first, I'm gonna literally just use the rotate tool here 
and just pull it back a tiny bit because obviously I can see that it needs to be straightened out just a little bit. Um, it's not a lot in it, but it is a tiny bit, so that does make a huge difference. So, so you see here, it's not loads, but it is a tiny bit. I think 0 0.3 will probably be the figure that we want to do, so I'm going to enter that manually there. Um, then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to crop this image down. So, yes, here is where you use, um, so here is where you lose resolution, obviously. But for my, myself personally, this is on a 5D SR. So for me personally, so this is obviously where you may lose resolution depending on your camera. But there's a couple of things to note here. First of all, most people these days post their images on social media and you, they're never to be seen again once the, it's gone through the wave. So if you're doing that, I don't think anyone's going to notice. The other thing as well is if you're printing, then of course you're going to lose resolution. But I'm shooting on a Canon 5DSR and to be honest with you, I'd still be able to print even cropping into this image. So it's not a huge problem. So I'm going to crop in. I'm going to salute, choose the uh, the resolution that I want, which is going to be in this case 2 by 3 or 4 by 6 And I'm going to bring that crop down. Somewhere like this. So I'm actually cropping it in a lot more than what you would think I was going to do. And you also have the ability there to then straighten it out a little bit more if that's not working out for you. So let's just press OK on that. You'll see here, it's, now you've cropped it in, you can see that actually probably my uh, my rotation, rotation tool needs to actually go a little bit further. So I'm going to go around about there, 5 point, 0.5 on that. So already, uh, we've just pulled that in now into there. Let's go do that onto auto again. We've just done that on there, and I'm just gonna, looks a lot straighter. It does look a lot straighter than it was. And you can see already that we're looking more like the kind of image that I had in mind when we were shooting this photo. There's a couple of things though. I am gonna have to pull this corner up a little bit in Photoshop, and we'll do that in a moment. Before we go into Photoshop, let's just try and edit this file to some kind of basic standard. So. I'm going to reduce my highlights down, I'm minus 40 here, my shadows, I want to pull them down. I'm going to boost my contrast up to around about 17, and my exposure is going to come with this. It's going to bring that up, maybe maybe just to stop a light there, that's a stop. Uh, whites, I'm going to also increase, and what I want to do here is I want to have it so that they this here, this section, so this shows the clipping darks. And this is the white. What I want to do is I want to bring it up to, so it goes yellow or blue like the blacks are here. And that means you're getting as much information into that file as possible. So all the blacks and all the whites as much as possible. And you can see there, if I go too much on my contrast, you're adding a lot of black. So it, it starts to reduce, almost like clip the shadows, which we don't want to do. I'm going to add a little bit of texture, just a couple of notches and the dehaze here. You'll see there is a bit of haze there on the left hand side. So adding a bit of dehaze does actually just grind through that photo here on that left. So that's what we don't want to do. And I'm going to just add a little bit of vibrance. And we're probably somewhere now around the JPEG, what the JPEG would have looked like in the back of the camera had we have shot it straight. And there we go. So I'm just going to make sure we get this file as we want it. Yeah, because the thing we care about really is this section here in the image. So, you know, that's about right. That's about where we want to be. So at the minute, I'm fairly happy with the lines and the straightness of all of this. I'm just going to uh, straighten that a little bit more. Still having a bit of problem. Now you see here in this section here, obviously that's where I feel like it's not straightening out. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back to the library module. I'm going to right click, edit in Photoshop. Now I don't normally do this. Uh, for anyone who wants to know my usual workflow process, then we'll save that for another video. But for this particular one, I'm actually just going to say edit in Photoshop CC because I'm trying to do this fairly quick and we're not worried too much about 
overall quality. So uh, yeah, we're just trying to get the overall image looking nice. So wait for that to load into Photoshop. Once that's loaded into Photoshop, you can now see the file here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is press Control J, that's gonna give me another layer here. And I'm then gonna press Control and T, and that's just gonna bring up my tr free transform tool. Now, if you hold the control button, you can then grab this corner and pull it out to the left, and that's gonna then actually straighten out that wall on the left-hand side. That's the first thing. And that's gonna instantly help the impact of the photograph. So then the other thing as well is it's also straightened this roof a little bit more. So I'm also then gonna pull up though with this corner holding it, holding control again, pull it up just a little bit to minus 0.2. And you'll see now already we're looking a lot straighter in the image overall. I'm just gonna press the tick button. Okay button, so either press that or press enter. And look how much straighter this image is already. So I'm going to press enter and look how much straighter this photo is already. So I'm going to press flatten image, so right click, flatten image, and this is now really my file to start working on. From this point on, uh, the image really is your up to you to what you want to do to it. It's like personal style. Some people will st stick it up like this if that's what they're into, uh, and other people will want to do stylizing of their own to make the image look like theirs. So I use a couple of programs for this, which I'm not going to go into today. Um, sometimes use Nick Collection for little little parts of it, and I sometimes use Topaz Labs. But the main thing that I try to do is I try to use Layer Mask to, to apply certain techniques or certain stylized items to certain parts of the photo if I see fit. However, even though we've got this resolution, let's have a little look what we're at, by the way. Go to Image, Image Size, and you see here our resolution is still 6,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels, plenty big enough. Um, I've imported it at 240 uh, pixels per inch, which I shouldn't have done. That's just on my resolution setting. So when you go right click, edit in Photoshop, sometimes actually your settings are set to 240 or even 200, and that's where you're losing some quality when you do it that way. So the best thing to do there is, is to actually export the photo into a folder uh, and then open it as a TIFF once it's completed that process. So that's the better way to do things. But yeah, so look here, you see absolutely lost no resolution really in the photo. From this point on, I would stylize it as I wish um, and I will pop the final result up on the screen. Okay, so that's pretty much everything for today. Um, I'm actually gonna pop the raw files here into a, a, a link below the video. So you can basically come on here download those files and you can have a go at doing the same yourself and straightening them up and then cleaning it up and then stylizing them and if you want to um, then edit those and stylize them how you wish i'd love to see your results pop them into the group uh, story behind the imagery by james Kerwin. that's my group on facebook it's great to see some of your results of this however please do not disrespect the files they are my images and my files i'm simply giving them to you to use as a creative tool to practice um, so yes, they are my copyright and I don't expect to see them popping up on the screens anywhere anytime soon. However, thank you for watching. Join us next week. If you uh, like this video, then please do share it with a friend if you think they would find it useful. Hit subscribe, but of course, most importantly, give the like button a tickle. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye for now.